What's up, everybody? Welcome to my review of Immaculate. If you are brand new here, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. But if you've been here before, you might notice that I've switched up where I'm shooting. I'm trying to find like a more permanent studio setup in my home. And real quick, bear with me, just explain why I'm trying to mix things up. I will probably be adding some practical lights in here at some point or tweaking it a little bit here and there. But for right now, this is what we are. I'm dealing with and uh, I'm experimenting with, you know, I've been shooting in the kitchen because we only have two bedrooms in our home. One of those is nursery, one of those is our bedroom. And so, you know, I'm constantly moving lights in there, C-stands and mic setups and everything and trying to move the lamp and just get a shot and then move it all back out, move it back in. Of course, very time consuming. Also shooting in the kitchen has just been a pain to deal with the noise. I'm sure you guys have probably noticed in some of my more recent videos, it's not just like one refrigerator, there's two refrigerators in there, there's a small one and a larger one, an ice machine that's separate that's going, plus a water dish that's running all the time, dishwasher and multiple things that buzz in the home, and as well as just being in that like, it's a kitchen that goes to living room, so it's a very large, like long room with not a lot of like sound dampening. So it's just been a nightmare to try to deal with sound in there. And so I can't, you know, it's being, it's not realistic to just be able to unplug things constantly to get good audio because sometimes we have to do dishes. Sometimes, you know, I come home from work and we just have to do things. I can't just unplug the ice machine all the time. So hopefully this will be better. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get better audio in here and be able to tweak this setup more and also be able to keep it set up and do videos quicker. So there's that. Thank you for bearing with me. With that, I appreciate it. Now let's get into Immaculate. So Immaculate is another 2024 religious horror film. We've been getting so many religious horror films these days. This one starts, stars Sidney Sweeney and is directed by Michael Mohan. Mohan, that's how you say his name. You know, a lot of people are big Sydney Sweeney fans, and I didn't really know what to expect going into this film, but I heard some people talking about it, and I am always apprehensive with religious horror. I know some people really enjoy it. In my opinion, it tends to be, unfortunately, a lot of the horror is simply reliant on the religious aspect of it, and so the horror is just the religion. So it's usually just religion, church, bad. You know, and then that's the big shtick most of the time with a lot of these religious horror films. And so for me personally, I get sick of that. I like to see something a little more engaging that's similar to if you were to just show me a haunted house film again, and it's just ghosts in the house and that's it with nothing unique or no special way of shooting it or no interesting characters. You are really relying on just that core premise to hold your movie up. And for me, that just doesn't cut it. So going into Immaculate, seeing the first Omen and all these other religious horror movies coming out back to back, I was a little bit hesitant and also just with the state of horror movies today, but I heard a few people saying really good things about Immaculate. I heard some of that viral marketing, saw some of those posts and things come up. And so I was kind of excited going into it. I also heard about some sort of crazy ending, which I won't spoil right away. I'll get into spoilers in a minute. But right now, I'm not going to say anything, but I heard a little bit about that. So my anticipation going into it was a little bit higher than it initially was. Now, before I get into spoilers or negatives, let me start things off with the positives that I really liked about Immaculate. So the best part about Immaculate for me personally is the overall idea that it has. Going into it again, I kind of thought, hey, this is going to be super predictable. It's just going to be another like someone's pregnant with you know, Satan's baby or whatever, some generic thing. So there is an interesting story at play here. And I think that's the best part of the movie it does feel a little bit like they were like, Hey, that's a really good idea. And then they just tried to form a movie around that instead of writing a story based off that. But I'll get to that in a few minutes. The actual story that's going on here when you find out what is happening is really unique. And really cool. The other thing I did really enjoy about Immaculate is there are some decent kills in here. This is not one of those movies, in my opinion, that you're going to go in and be like, wow, that was really gory and really over the top. Although I had heard that from quite a few people. So it seems like our standard for what is an extreme gory or over the top horror film has really lowered. This is definitely not one of those films you're going to come out, I don't think, 
and being blown away by how much brutality is in there. But there is some cool scenes, uh, and there's some cool kill scenes, and there's some cool practical effects in there that I think work pretty well. And while I don't think Sydney Sweeney is actually the best actress and she doesn't do that great of a job in this, I do think for the most part, she's passable, kind of like this movie. I think that she does an okay job carrying this film. And so you can go into this and just kind of shut your brain off. You don't have super high expectations and you can follow her character, be entertained enough and have a few like good moments here and there. And so I think for the most part, Sydney Sweeney does what she needs to in this film. I don't think her character was, was fully fleshed out enough or she had a whole ton to work with. So I don't know if I should necessarily blame it on her exactly. But again, I think she does an okay job carrying this film for you to go in and just have a surface level passable decent time at the theater. The other thing that I actually did appreciate about Immaculate is something I don't see often in these films and is kind of a complaint is that they tend to write storylines like, you know, these people go to orphanages and they're helping kids or old folks home and they're helping older people or there's some sort of like elderly person or sick person or people in the hospital and that's like your character is like helping them or reading to them or something like that. And it always seems to show them like reading to the kids or reading to these older people or like taking them for a walk or just telling stories or something like that <clears throat> or hearing about, you know, their old times or whatever. But it never shows like the down and dirty part of what it's like to take care of kids. You know, when you even like the best kids, you see these movies where it's always like the bad kid and they're like kicking people or something like that. Even good kids act out. And so when these nuns go to this church to help out these uh, aging older nuns who are, are either ill or at their end of life, there's one moment where it shows them like changing, you know, like cleaning up poop and changing the bedding and like kind of shows a little bit more about what it's like to actually caretake for an elderly person. And so although that was simply a moment in the film and I, I almost feel like it was crammed in there just for like a gross out moment, which again, I'll get into a little bit more of why I think those things are in there in my negatives, but I did appreciate that. I don't see it often and I, I kind of get sick of like these concepts of just, oh, you know, this is what it's like to caretake for kids or older people or take care of an orphanage or whatever. And it's only the bad kids or like the possessed grandmas that are hard to deal with. So getting into my negatives, unfortunately, I do believe Immaculate is one of those religious horror films that relies very heavily on religion as being its primary antagonist religion and men and then you've got sydney sweeney is your uh protagonist and that's very that's it clear cut and dry so from early on beginning of the film it's very clear that they're trying to throw a bunch of other things at you to make you think that maybe there's something else going on and that's one of this film's biggest downfalls is that they Director is literally just throwing birds at the window. There's actually a jump scare in this film where a bird flies into the window and scares our main character. Have we not seen that for a million times, and especially in religious horror? And there's, you know, older nuns that we're supposed to think maybe, like, maybe they're possessed, maybe they're they have dementia, they're psychotic. There's all these things they're trying to like throw at you, just like a bunch of random stuff including like I was trying to kind of hint at earlier, the concept of that they were cleaning up those poopy diapers. They're just, he's kind of like directors throwing like gross out things at you, you know, killing chickens, all these different things to make you try to maybe make you think there's more going on in this movie. Instead of writing a compelling backstory to characters that are your antagonist and then have motivations for why what's happening in the movie is happening. Instead, there's just basically this overall concept of religion that's thrown in there. And then there's, of course, like one main baddie and a bunch of helpers that are not fleshed out at all. So that really the overall like concept is just, there's just like religion is the main motivator and men. And so that's super apparent. And again, I just don't think that doesn't work for me, especially if you're trying to like show strong women. And yet all of these other like nuns and these female characters are either going along with it and not fleshed out characters, just little like helpers that don't get any character development or screen time, or 
their other crazy people or they're meant to throw you off guard or they're red herring, something like that. There's not really any like decent fleshed out supporting characters or anything, anyone you can really get behind besides your main character. So when you've got one main character in your and you're trying to tell, tell like a, a female empowerment story and all the men are bad and it's super obvious that they're not fleshed out people, they don't have good backstories, they don't have really good motivation. It's basically they are men that are bad and religion is bad. And so then they're getting all of the other religious people to help them. And that's really it. There's this hierarchy that's very clear in this film. And again, it's not that I'm trying to say that those things are inherently bad because that's what it maybe sounds like, but that is really, really the movie's really relying on just those core things as being the antagonist in this film. And you just to kind of hop on board, there's not really any like real good uh, setting. There's not really any good atmosphere or anything like that. Just the fact that we're in a church or like an old church or something that's, religious in the theme is your is your horror that's what the movie's really relying on the fact that these priests are very very like misogynistic and they're very like they talk down to her and they're very like quick to jump to you know telling her what to do and controlling her that's like your that's your villain you know there's not any real like explanation for the reason behind it of course obviously when you find out what's going on at the end you're supposed to be like oh that's why but it's just the movie's like just expecting you to be like, yeah, okay, they're bad. We know they're bad because they're because we're in this religious setting because they're men and that's it. And it just doesn't work for me. As, even when you get to the end, you figure out what's going on. It just doesn't work. Again, there's no other supporting characters, no other motivation, no explanation for why or or how it's going to continue on or how they got to where they are today. There's just no real driving factor. Again. As I've said, besides just religion and men. Just to elaborate on that a little more with the suspense scenes in this film, every jump scare, every like red herring is just meant to literally just fill out the runtime to kind of throw you off guard until you get to this inevitable ending. It really feels like they came up with this idea, which I again admit is a, a cool concept. And then they're just kind of padding out the time until they could get there. They're just literally, it's just a bunch of fluff scares. They don't mean anything. There's no stakes. Once you find out what's going on, none of the scares in this film mean anything. And that's the problem. And when you actually think back to the film you just watched, and all the scares, the creepy old ladies and the, the chicken, the dead chickens and the bird flying, none of it means anything. There, there's no actual driving factors for any of those scares except for to try to distract you from what's going on. And it's not a big enough like twist or cliffhanger to hold the entire weight of the runtime of the film on its back when you inevitably get to that point and realize that nothing that you watched before really mattered except for a couple of pieces of the characters, which again, we already know. When you're showing me a character that is, we already know is very clearly bad. And then you find out their motivation later. That twist doesn't, does not carry the weight of all these other jump scares that have nothing to do with that main character. Like there's no suspense scenes with that main character. There's no character development, as I said, with that main antagonist. There's no, nothing to get you there. It literally is just like, boom. 180, this is the story that was going on. This all, all this stuff means nothing. Another negative before I get into spoilers is I just don't think Sydney Sweeney is the best actress. I know a lot of people really love her, and I know I'm already going to get a lot of hate for this review, but I just don't think she's very good in this film. She's not terrible. Definitely passable, but she's not very good. There's not a lot of meat to sink into in the script, I don't think. So again, maybe not entirely her fault, but I don't think she's very good. There's a... a very important scene at the end, which is supposed to be super dramatic and meaningful. And I just felt like it was awkward. It didn't really work. I don't think she really carried it as well as I feel other people think that she did. And there's a very similar scene to that in the first Omen, which if I were to do a head to head, these films are very similar. First Omen is a far superior film, in my opinion. And there's very similar scenes. And the actress in the first Omen knocks it out of the park. She's amazing in that film, and I just don't think Sydney Sweeney 
does anything really at all in this film besides kind of just like skate through it and hit all the beats that she needs to. So my final negatives before I get into spoilers is that this movie is incredibly predictable and that ending that everyone talked about, everyone was talking about this ending. They were like, oh, even if you didn't enjoy the film, the ending, that ending is real like gut punch. And if you had maybe like held me up into that point, I they may have been able to stick the landing a little bit better, but I don't think the land the ending how was nearly as impactful as people said it was, but also it was unbelievably predictable. That was not anywhere near the twist that everyone talked about from the opening scene of this film. No joke from the opening scene of this film, which I guess I'm sure I'm not the only one. You could watch the trailer and you could predict this film. I pretty much predicted for the most part, exactly what was going to happen again, not entirely the actual like details of the story that are going on in here are clever. I didn't predict that part. That was unique. But the ending, I pretty much was like, okay, I think I know what's going to happen. It's going to be this crazy ending. I hope there's more than that. The bad guys, or the antagonist, the villain in this film, super predictable. Laid it out from the very beginning. The opening shot, which doesn't even have any of the main characters in it, I was like, oh, this is just going to be another one of those films where it's this. And that's exactly what it was. Again, details made it better, but it's kind of the point I'm making with this reveal is there's one core piece that was a nice surprise, a good story, and the rest of this film is generic and predictable and just a bunch of fluff to get you that to add to that ending. And again, that ending, if you watch this movie and you've ever seen a movie, especially religious horror and especially religious horror where someone's pregnant, it can only go like one of a couple of ways. There's literally only a couple of things that can really happen unless you do something like out way crazy out there. It's pretty easy to predict there's going to be one of two things that will happen. And then of those, one or two things will happen. And it's not hard to just get there once you're following the film or I mean, from the very beginning. So again, I don't think that this is this just crazy twist that some people were really surprised by. I just, I mean, like, what else could have happened for it to be? There's only, like, it'd be a totally different ending if something like that didn't happen. And yeah, the way that it happened was kind of unique, I guess, and kind of cool. But again, to me, fairly predictable. Obviously, I didn't watch the opening frame and think I knew exactly how that part at the end was going to happen, literally. Clearly, I didn't think that. But as the film's going on, there's just, I mean... You know what's going to happen two or three minutes before it happens every scene anyway. So then by the time you get to that end, you know it's coming. And so it's just not its just not anywhere near as shocking as it should be. All right, everybody. So I'm going to talk about some spoilers right now. This is your warning. If you have not seen Immaculate and you think you might be one of those people that would enjoy this ending and enjoy this film, I urge you to click off and go watch it because a lot of people are enjoying this. And before having this, the ending completely ruined for you, you know, go give it a chance. Maybe you might really enjoy it. That being said, now I am going to be talking about some spoilers. And the first thing I want to talk about is the overall idea of this film that we find out that they're actually, instead of, you know, it being like an omen child or like the devil's child, we get this immaculate con conception and it's people in the church tired of waiting for the second coming of Jesus and actually are trying to create that. And I thought that idea is incredibly unique. I've never seen that before, never thought of that. That core idea, that concept is really cool. I, how they get the actual DNA of Jesus from one of the nails that was in his feet or hands from years ago, they pick some nails and like flesh off of that or some skin or whatever, and they clone him is ludicrous. Again, I, uh, the time period is super confusing. Also, how long ago it actually was, which I'll get into in a second, but that idea is ludicrous. I laughed for a second when I found that out. And then I literally took me like, I, I figured out what was going on. They give you that reveal of what the, actually the, what they're trying to do. And I'm like, I laughed. And then I was like, oh, but that idea is really, really cool. But I had to like, I laughed for a second. And then I was kind of like, okay, that's really cool. The actual, you know, villain, the priest who is trying to basically use all these nuns and create the second, you know, create Jesus, create the second coming of Christ is super, again, not explained, super generic. It, it was super obvious right away that this guy was getting her pregnant. To me, uh, right away, these guys were getting her pregnant. 
I knew that right away, especially when she's like passed out or she's like waking up from like that dream sequence. She's all loopy or whatever. Super obvious, obviously, that she was impregnated. I mean, I, I knew that from the very beginning. That exactly what's going to happen. And it's just these men are bad and they've got these like nuns that are just going along with it. Again, none of those nuns are like really fleshed out. We don't hear any of them talk about how they want to save the world. I can't help but compare it to the first Omen where these other characters are really fleshed out and there's a lot of supporting characters. We don't see any of the rest of the church talk about what their objective is. There's just this one guy who's been trying to do it. And of course he has help from this doctor and all these other people. So again, the idea, really cool execution. I don't think landed at all. Before we get into the ending, I want to talk about that scene with the chicken. And in this review, if it's not already terribly long, bear with me for a minute. That scene where she gets blood all over her and tries to convince the priest to send to get take her to the to the hospital because they won't let her leave the hospital, right? That scene, bear with me as I explain to you how I think that should have been done so much better and would have changed the film. What we watch, right, is this scene where, first of all, we don't really know the time period. It's not super clear that they have cell phones. So then when they have cell phones, it's like jarring. Wait, what a minute, wait, what? They have cell phones? Not explained very well at all. I think the director was trying to throw you off again and not tell you so you kind of know what's going on and then use the cell phone as like a shock thing. But it could have been done so much better. She gets the blood from the chicken who we've shown earlier she does not want to kill, right? So she doesn't want to like go there. She just feels that's not that's against her more morality. She doesn't want to kill chickens, right? So she hasn't gotten to that point yet in the film. And then she gets blood all over her. We don't know yet that she's killed the chicken. They see her, they, she pretends to be having like a miscarriage. She's screaming. She tries to get them to take her to the hospital. She convinced the priest. So obviously the priest cares enough to send her to the hospital, right? So we're supposed to be knowing, okay, this is very important to the priest. We already clearly know is bad, super obvious. Maybe we're not supposed to know it yet, but it's very obvious. He puts her in the back of the car and they're driving to the hospital. Then you see the other, the nun cleaning. She finds the dead chicken and then she calls the guy. And do you have this? pretty good moment of intensity where he's looking in the backseat at her and she's still like acting for him, pretending to be like in pain and agony and wanting him to go to the hospital. And he's just staring at her. And that's a, that's a good moment, right? It's a good moment. But imagine this, if you will, if it hadn't been posed as a twist where the chicken was something that she found and then we go, Oh, she killed a chicken. It was, set out like a twist for us to then get revealed to us, to, to the audience, right? If they had not been done that way, if in fact we had seen her sneak out, get the chicken, struggled with a little bit, but knowing she needs to get out of this situation and then killed the chicken, put the blood on her, and we'd seen that happen. So first of all, you have this moment of this character, which you never really get. There's a moment where she kills that nun later on, but you never really get this moment where the character is going through this moral struggle and she's trying to like, you know, figure out a way out and trying to like come o basically get over her moral <laughs> dilemmas and basically cross that line where she's going to jump to this moment where she kills all these nuns and the baby thing, right? So like, there's this moment she needs to kind of struggle with that a little bit and then get to that point. So we could have shown that a little bit with the chicken, right? You could have seen her struggle a little bit seen the blood put on her and then see where she hides the chicken. And then the nuns come in and everyone's freaking out. And you're like, okay, are they going to take her? Right. Are they going to take her to the hospital? Is this going to work? So you've already got this little bit more of this level of suspense. And then she gets in the back of the car and you're like, how far is the hospital? Right. And then if we already know they have cell phones too, that this could have also benefited instead of posing cell phones as a twist. But regardless, then you see the nun like cleaning up the sheets and she's like wadding everything up and then it flashes back to the car and she's like, how far to the hospital? And he's like, it's 20 miles or whatever, you know, and then whatever it is, you know, and so then she's screaming in the back seat, and you know that chicken's under the bed or whatever, wherever she hit it. And you see this nurse or the nun, excuse me, cleaning up the sheets and she's like wiping up some blood on the ground and she's like really close to the bed. And then you cut back to the car and she's screaming and they're like, you know, driving to the hospital and where you can use that. That would be so much more intense, so much more suspenseful when you're waiting to see if this nun is going to find the chicken 
or if she's going to get to the hospital on time, what is going to happen? Right, that, that moment could be stretched out so much longer if we just knew about it instead of posing it as a twist. And again, that's like the overall concept of this film. It feels like it's just trying to like just shake you up and like pull twists and like pull the wool over your eyes. The whole film, instead of actually trying to engage you and create suspense, and then none we could show, see her finding it, or we could just cut and see her like making a phone call, right? She picks up her cell phone. Maybe we know they have cell phones. Maybe she has a, a phone in the church, right? We see her run over. She makes the phone call. Maybe we didn't even see her get the chicken. And you're like, wait, did she find the chicken? Who's she calling? Is she calling him? Right? And then you hear his phone ring. Boom. Right? There's that moment of like, oh crap. Is she going to make it? What's she going to do? I just feel like that moment would be so much more intense. And then you could see him answer the phone and you know say, yeah, wait, what? What'd you say? You know, whatever. And then he hangs up and there's this moment of suspense. You could still have that moment where he's not even looking at her. Maybe he's looking ahead and like, they're still driving and you're like, does he know? Does he not know? And she's trying to figure it out and she's screaming. She doesn't know when to run. So you can still have the moment where she runs away and they chase her. You can have all of that still but built up to like an entirely different level. That's like called building suspense building anticipation, building tension with the film. You didn't show us how far away the hospital. You didn't show us like the outskirts of the land or like how far she has to go, where she could run. She's running through a field, but where's she going to go? You didn't show us. Is there a house she can go to? Does she have a chance of getting away? What are her chances? If you wanted it to feel like it was hopeless, that that didn't come through either. So again, thank you for bringing with me that long spiel. I, if you're still watching, I really appreciate it. I know this review is going to be super long, but if you're watching, don't tell me what you think. Don't you feel like that could have been just so much better? That could have built up so much more tension. And again, I just think that's the overall problem with this film. It's just trying to pull the wool over, over your eyes so that it can reveal it later instead of actually trying to build to it. All right, let's talk about the ending. So again, right away, I knew that early on, there's only so many places this film can go. And after hearing that there was... Now, part of this, of course, is just because I did hear there was an ending. So I immediately thought she's just going to kill all the priests and the nuns, maybe. And that's going to, she's like going to go John Wick on everybody. And that's what I thought, or like right away, very early on, I thought the men were obviously bad. They impregnated, impregnated her. Like early on, I knew men impregnated her, trying to do something. And she's going to go like John Wick and slaughter everybody. That's what I knew was going to happen right away. And then from there, there's only so many places you can go with the baby, right? She can either have a miscarriage, she can have the baby, and she could try to take care of it and escape, or she can kill the baby. <laughs> you know, it's like this baby she has shown no attachment to. She's shown no interest in it at all. She hates the baby. She has shown no signs of actually caring about this baby. So it's really not built up to the point where you're like, oh crap, she killed the baby. The whole time through, she shows no interest in it. She shows only interest in herself, only interest in getting away, in surviving. She shows no moral compass towards the end of the film, no moral like, switch in the film. There's nothing to show us that maybe we should not expect her to kill the baby, except for maybe that she might lose the baby or something, you know? And so it's very easy to jump to that conclusion. And then I knew this film was inspired by Barbarian, which... Fantastic film. If you haven't seen Barbarian, side note. But I knew this was inspired by Barbarian. The director had said that he was. So when the catacombs were mentioned early on in the film, again, I thought, oh, well, of course, that's going to be like a third act thing. And then again, it's just another red herring. They clearly mentioned you can't go into the catacombs or whatever. It's just another thing for you to think maybe that means anything. Because later when she goes into the catacombs, I think maybe something's going to happen. Nothing happens. That could have taken place anywhere. She could have gone out the front door and it would have been basically the same exact thing as going through the catacombs. There was like a little bit of tension built up because it was dark, but that's really it. It was not well executed. And the slaughter of all the nuns at the end, again, there's no moment where the character really struggled. So then we see her like, oh, dang, she's, she's just going to go loose on all these. And she just starts killing people. And you're just like, okay, She's self-preservation. She's trying to get out of here. It just feels not as impactful as it could have as if they had built something up. So then she's killing these people and there's not even that many kills. There's not that much blood. I mean, 
I, I just thought it was going to be way crazier. You know, of course, she's going to kill the main bad guy. Talk about technology real quick. And before I go off on exactly the ending. So there is this moment where you see the scar on the woman's foot, right? And now this could be my fault. If, if you can clarify this for me, the older nun has that scar or the branding that they do to Sydney Sweeney, Sweeney's character to show that she was one of the people who was, you know, uh, had immaculate conception or whatever was impregnated with this DNA that they're trying to create the birth of Christ. But those nuns were really old. And this guy, from what I understand, he is the one that created this technology. It wasn't like his father did. And he carried it on. Maybe I missed that in the film, but I don't understand. Again, it felt like they were these old nuns to be creepy, to try to throw you off. And then they were branded. So he could be like, ha, ah, look, see that connects. But does it? Because why were they trying to impregnate? The priest is not that old. So was he like 12 trying to impregnate these older nuns? What's the best chance of them getting pregnant? This Sydney Sweeney is really young. So why would he be trying to do this to use them? I don't really understand that. So again, maybe that is my fault and I misunderstood that. But to me, it felt like it just kind of was like, again, another one of those things where he's trying to like, ha you'll find out about that later. Pull the wool over your eyes instead of actually explaining things. So let's talk more about the actual ending. She gets outside. She rips the baby out of her stomach, which that was a cool moment. The fact that instead of giving birth, he had cut her and she ripped it out. But this again, that's that moment where her acting, I don't think really holds up. She's just sitting there like ah, screaming and it's supposed to be really impactful. It reminded me of the end of Pearl which I know a lot of people like that end of Pearl, but to me, it's, she's just awkwardly sitting there in front of the camera and it's supposed to work and it just doesn't really work. And I felt that way at the end of this film. It just doesn't really work. She's screaming at the camera and you're supposed to like kind of feel like creeped out or like uneasy in this intensity. It's supposed to make you feel a little awkward that it's daylight, it's bright out, midsummer vibes, you know, and it just doesn't work for me. And then she goes over to this rock and I'm like, okay, yeah, obviously I thought she was going to kill the baby. And now, okay, she's going to use the rock. Clearly she's going to use the rock. She's going to smash the baby. And then this rock feels super like she like picks it up. She's like, ah, and it's like, there's no weight to the rock. So then she slams it down and there's this weird noise. And I was like, I was thinking like she might give birth to like a full grown baby Jesus or something like something really strange. But instead, it was just she killed the baby. And I just thought that was the most predictable, generic ending. And I, I'm not to say like her killing her baby obviously is not like dark, but because the film hasn't really done anything to earn that ending, it just doesn't work. You know, so like obviously that's not a good thing, but it doesn't work in the way the film wants it to work. To, in my opinion, in my eyes, it just didn't land. And again, you know, up until I didn't think that she was going to kill it with a rock when I first saw the like early on 20 minutes in the film. Of course, I didn't know exactly that part, but I knew, I knew at some point she was going to kill the baby. And, or at least I had very strong, you know, suspicions that that would happen. So besides a few details about like her getting cut open like a cesarean and pulling the baby out and the rock outside, you know, I, it was just not didn't nothing, you know, crazy came that I was like came out of left field. I thought I was expecting something so much wilder. And then, you know, again, because they've done such a poor job at showing us where this church is, we don't know where she is. Like, is she going to get away? Do I care? Is she going to go run through another field? Is she going to steal a car? I don't know. Like, I don't really care at that point, you know? And we don't really care about the character either because she hasn't really like had to fight for her life. It feels like she almost didn't want to kill and then it was really easy to kill everybody and just kill the baby. And like there was one moment of fighting this priest at the end. So there's not, there was not anything that really made us root for her. So that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching my review of Immaculate. I really appreciate you staying through to the end. If you did, let me know what you thought of Immaculate. If you saw it and explain to me some of the things that maybe I missed. And uh, if not, if you do agree with me, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear some people that do agree with me also, of course, because, you know, a lot of people are really hyping this up. And as I've said before, especially with religious horror, I just feel like we've set the bar so low and we just are just taking in whatever we get and just being like, yes, give it to me. 
horror. I love it. It's fine, but it could be so much better. And I just don't feel like this. They don't feel like this delivered. So thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate. I don't it. scared. I'm a big bad wolf. I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold, and I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose.